hello. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Um, thought I'd let you play along with me. Um, I just launched these new acetate squares. So this pack comes with six clear squares, and these are two and a quarter by two and a quarter, and then it comes with six semi-opaque ones. Um, and I think what I want to do, because this is what I was thinking of when I designed this, was to make a little book out of it and then bind it with these mini um, ring binders. I don't know where I got them. Um, I've had them in my stash forever. I actually grabbed a couple of sizes because this, you know, maybe it'll get thicker when I put papers. I'm going to put papers and probably fabric and all kinds of stuff in here. So I grabbed some others that I had in my stash as well. Actually, I wish I had a size in between those these two here. I think that would be the perfect size, but I don't, so I'm using what I have. Um, and I think for the point of this, I'm gonna use alcohol inks. I haven't used my alcohol inks in a very long time. And I kinda want to use them. So I'm just gonna get a piece of, uh, Deli paper extra thick here, um, so it's not super, super messy. And then I've got to kind of figure out what color theme I'm going for here. I was thinking maybe actually yellow and pink, <laughs> which is not normally my color, but uh, I got some of these uh, Marabou alcohol inks that I've not ever used, so I was kind of interested and using them just to see what they're like. Uh, let's see here. Let me get some pinks. Maybe that pink. And, oh my goodness, I really don't have a lot of pinks. Um, and it's funny because I thought I had every Almost every alcohol color there was. There's that pink. Maybe this one is dead. All right, I got some here. We'll use, we'll use these. All right, let me move those aside. So I'm gonna use the, the pinks and yellows. <coughs> Might come back in with something else, I don't know. Um, so let's start with these clear ones. Um, and I think I'm going to try to be a little deliberate, so I probably need a small paintbrush as well, because I don't know if I'd be able to drop on um, and do what I want to do. But so this piece here is this like arch. Um, so I kind of want to do this one color and maybe the outside a different color. Um, so let's try, let's try one of these, these alcohol inks. I really like the uh, nozzle. Oh, that went everywhere. I'm glad I did it in the trash can. So now my scissors are all yellow. No worries. All right. So if I, I mean, you can actually control these ones a lot easier than the Ranger ones um, a lot. Um, it doesn't really come out as quickly, which I kind of like. So there's that one. It smells a little weird. Um, you can see that. You have to kind of do it carefully. And I do want a little blending here. these pieces to get some of that orange. And I think because this is like too yellow for me, let's put in a different different yellow here. just for some different color theme, maybe on the outside. I do really like how you can control these so much more 
and the ranger. Alright, so I'm just going to move this piece aside, let it dry. Alright, so let's do this X one. So let's use this darker one and we'll put that kind of here on the X's. And then maybe on the outside, we come in with some of this lighter pink. And I'm going to come back over these with some of my wax paste on those raised areas um, just for some more depth and texture because like that actually has way too much alcohol ink than I want so and it really all blend it didn't change a lot so how about we come into the center of each X there we go that looks kind of cool all right, so these have these horizontal lines. So how about we do like here, and maybe here, and then this pink, and then this really dark one. I'm just going to let that actually sit and dry. Alright, so this one has some leaves. So let's go back to this yellow. And I'll come in with this darker yellow on the outsides here. have it different. Let's see what other yellows do I have. Oh, neon yellow. That's pretty bright. This metallic. Let's try the metallic yellow. I didn't even know I bought it. And let me mix first. And I always wear gloves with alcohol ink because my hands get all sorts of messed up. There we go. And I can see right now these alcohol inks are kind of having their own mind, which is okay. I don't really mind. I like that metallic a lot. Okay, so why is that not coming out? Hmm. Let's put some of that. The little balls on the inside keep coming up to that hole. That's a nice metallic. I might have to order some more colors of these. I really do like them. Okay, let's move that aside. And so this is a rainbow shape. Um, let's see, other pinks. Let's see. <clears throat> That's a real pink. And some other yellows here. The one thing I noticed though, the Ranger, and maybe just because I've used Ranger alcohol inks, they they don't, they move but not as much and I kind of like that because they stay where you put them, if that makes sense. Um, and I can also, if I wanted to, come in here um, with some of the blending solution and, and change them up. And then we have this, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, it's like a scallop kind of. Um, and I like, so let's do this in the dark. 
And then maybe the light pink on the outside. And then how about just a bit of this yellow there. All right, so these are clearly saturated and will probably take a bit to dry. I know alcohol ink is supposed to dry uh, quickly, but I really layered it on so much it's actually going through my bottom paper here. Um, so it'll probably be probably a few hours, to be honest with you. Um, I think what I'm going to do is, in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and do the same process with my semi-opaque ones. Um, I think, actually no, what I'm going to do with these is um, use my acrylic paint, but I want to keep in the same color family with yellows and pink, so let me just move my alcohol inks aside here. Alright, let me, let me go get my paint and I will be back. Oh, I was not recording, I am so sorry. So we're adding acrylic paints to these pieces and for this one I just did them in a gradient with the different shades of uh, pink that I had. Alright, let me clean up this piece. That looks awesome. So you can see the different shades of pink that grabbed at the etch portion. So that's going to be a, a really cool piece actually. So this is the first one I did with yellow. And I think when this dries just a bit, I might come in with some of the darker orange and maybe get an orange and, and change the colors of those a little bit more. Um, this one I really love a lot. I think it, I think it looks good. I just, I'm going to set that aside to let it dry. So this is the arch. So let's do the outside in this light color. And I'm just, I'm, you know, pushing it into that etched area. I just want to make sure it really kind of gets into that etched area. And let's come in with this light pink. So when I'm wiping back, you know, I'm trying not to mix too much so I can get good color for those two. Um, and I wasn't thinking, but clearly the light pink was in the center that wasn't etched, so I'm not going to have any color. So let's, let's just add it to the outside here and go over that. And it is blending with that other one just ever so slightly. So let's, let's make it even more. All right, so we have a little bit of all kinds of colors here. You see that one? All right, so now we have this little scallop piece. Let's go super dark with this one. And you can see I'm just playing with the paint. So for that, instead of actually scraping it off, I kind of want it to stay a little bit on this uh, piece in the back, so I just dabbed it off and it, it has a little bit of a gradient. And I could come in here actually and do the same here. So then the whole piece is is filled in with paint. All right, so this one's going to need some, and I think I might actually get some um, black paint 
for some of these. All right, so this one, I think it needs to be this color here. Actually, let's do those two. Then let's do that with those two. Now that looks really cool. Look how awesome that looked. Cool, cool, cool. All right, then we have the last piece, which are these leaves. So let's do this dark. Let's do this one super dark. And then let's do this one. Mm -hmm -hmm. Let's do this one. So if you really want to keep the color integrity, you're just going to have to be mindful when you rip it off or wipe it off. So for example, let me clean this up just a minute here. Um, so this is a good example, and I, I can go back over. I actually wiped a little too much off. So you can see the two-tone effect there. So this I wiped a little too much off. So I'm going to come back in and put a little bit more. I just want it a little darker. So with the baby wipe, you know, it clearly is wiping it out a little bit more. Um, so no worries if you did that, just go back in, put some more, and voila. So let's see, this one, let's, I need a really dark, let's get an orange for this. Ooh, way too much paint, Tina, way too much paint. All right, so let's come in on this outside edge. Okay. So that did change the color. You can see a little bit more gradient there. Um, but I need, I need some other color here, I think. Let's put that in there. Wipe that out. It changed it slightly, just a little bit. You can see a little bit of color variety there with that one. So I like those two a lot. This one is really cool because I left it all over on it. This one, let's come in here on this last line and just add a little bit of this yellow just to add some color. I like that a lot. And then this, let's come in here on this inside piece. There, that looks nice, nice, nice. All right, look at some of these. Aren't these really fun? I'm like seriously just, it's so, and I have so much paint here. I need to like get my art journal out, I think, and just smoosh it around. Um, actually, what I might do, um, because I am gonna put some papers in here, maybe I'll grab some papers and use the colors that are on here and just make up some collage uh, material. So I'm gonna let everything dry. I think I'll do that with some of the papers. And then when everything's dry, um, I'll come back and what I'm going to do also is cut some papers to size. So these are two and a quarter by two and a quarter. So I'll cut some papers down that I'll be able to fit in between here. I might actually put some fabric. I'm going to go through my fabric stash and see what I have available that might look really cool in this. And then we'll come back and, and pull it all together. Okay, I have everything dried. I have some more little paper bits. So um, I went ahead and selected two that I wanted for the covers. So I think I'm gonna use this in the front cover and this is the back cover. And then I just backed them with some 
vintage paper and you can see through these even though they're you know semi-opaque you can still see and I love that subtleness of the letters and the words behind it so these will be my covers um, so then I just took some of my collage paper that I actually already had in my stash that were in the same color family um, so this one I was just playing with some um, solar fast this was months ago um, on some uh, antique ledger paper um, and so I have stencils on the back side of it with that and then on the front side I glued a, a jelly plate print um, and I happen to have again ones that were in the same color palette so I thought those would be a great addition I also had um, from some of my dye pot dyeing, I, the paper was this pink, but I went ahead and just on one side smushed all that extra paint that I had sitting around and I love it so when you cut it up you create really interesting backgrounds. And then on the other side I took some spray mist with some stencils. And again, when you cut these up, you just you get really interesting bits. I've always been a fan of a big sheet cut down like that. So we have those. And then these ones were another del uh, jelly plate print that I had laying around. Again, the color palette was great. And it pulls in some of this green, and I'll show you why that's kind of important. So this was on the one side of the jelly plate, and then the other side I just put a vintage... Um, catalog paper on the back and it was an orange and again the same color palette and when I cut it down you see the bits of these vintage uh, fashion ladies on the back side so I thought that would be fun I also just grabbed from and my stash is like right here off camera I have a huge basket that actually is needs to be gone through because there's so much uh, ephemera in there right now and this is just all stuff that I grabbed from it so these were some transparencies that I had printed I was experimenting with some Van Dyke printing Van Dyke brown print printing and so I had these laying around I cut them to shape and then these are some of my uh, Nordic flora acetate pieces that again I cut down to shape to bring in a little bit of that green um, so I have those pieces I also grabbed one of my yearbooks. I've been obsessed lately with using my yearbook uh, images. So I just cut out some images from there. I thought that would be great for the black and white piece. So I have those to add. And then I had this. And so if you're going to be attending Compendium Society, I'm going to show you how to use this in a really cool journal that I call, or an artist book, the Home Improvement Journal. And so I had a piece of it sitting here, some scraps, so I went ahead and just smushed it in the same paint. I'm going to add that to my book. And then this fabric, which was in what was inspired my book binding tape, and this color palette. So again, same color palette that I have going here with a little bit of the green. So that's why I thought I would throw in some green. So I have all of this here. It's going to be a really chunky book. Um, I made a little template and I think what I'll do is go ahead and scan this in and maybe put a link below where if you wanted to um, do this yourself and I'm going to use uh, binder rings now this might be too chunky for these little ones but yet not quite for this big one I'll have to see when I get ready to put it together so I might have to go shopping and try to see if I can find a slightly bigger uh, binder ring um, for this but I'm going to I have three holes here, but I think I only want two because this is only a two and a quarter inches tall. I think I'm only going to need two. But for the template, I'll put three in case you want to put three in here. And then that way I have it where if I find it's not quite stable enough, I can go ahead and punch the other hole. So I this is just a, I think it's an eighth of an inch uh, hole punch. I am going to just start off by punching the holes on the outside of my template. Um, the other thing that I did here too, because the acetate pieces are have rounded corners, I went ahead with my corner chomper and rounded everything too, so it would look really nice and um, and even. Um, I think I'm going to try to do these in stacks um, with my big crocodile. And I think I have it set already on 
I do not have it set on the 8th. That's, that's on a quarter right now. I bought a new one and I haven't even unboxed it yet. Um, all right, there we go. All right, so I think I'm going to do these in groups and I'm just going to clip it together with a small little clip. Um, and it doesn't, honestly, let's see, these ones, I think the writing, just so they're upright. Okay, so it is this way. So let's go ahead and um, This isn't rounded, but I am trying to line it up here on this edge, and I'm lining it up at the top and the bottom. And I'm going to just stick this clip there. And I'm going to go ahead and punch all of my holes. And I use my crop a dial for fabric you might have to go in it and with an awl and just really make it big enough but um, I am gonna go with it it will it should cut through this I've cut through some pretty hefty stuff so I am gonna go ahead and get all of my holes punched and then we'll come back and well as I'm also too off camera I'm gonna put it in the order that I I wanted and you know I have a lot of pages here and I want to put it already in the order that I want to put it in my book, and then we'll assemble it back. I'll be back in a few. All right, I have everything in the order I want. I have a big, nice clip to hold it together. And um, the, the little clips, the little binder ring clips, are going to be too small for this because I made it just a little too chunky, and I, I want the pages to be able to move. So I'm going to use this just for now, just for demonstration purposes, but I'm going to see if I can find one that's a little bit smaller than this anyway. I do like the black, actually. Um, so it might, and I'm going to try here. I've got these clipped, and it might be easier to keep them clipped and then just, I am just going through all of my pages here. Um with my clip and I am finding that this clip keeps getting stuck. I don't know if the holes aren't quite big enough, probably not for my, let's see it goes there. I might have to unclip, I just didn't want to because it's holding it nice and snug right here, but I also don't want to rip my pages either. Um, if you do have delicate pages, and some of these might be that way, um, what you can always do is take a piece of washi tape and run it along, and I might do that after I kind of get this all here together, and I think I'll probably do it off camera and then come back. Um, run a piece of washi tape along this edge as reinforcement, and then that way when you're punching your holes, your paper isn't going to rip. Um, and plus you have a decorative element there. So let me put this together and I'll come back and do a flip through. All right, so this looks a little ridiculous because these ring, uh, ring binders are rather large. Um, the other thing too is um, with these ring binders, that 18th inch hole is really tight, but the quarter inch would be way too large. So, um, you just kind of take that as a, a point of reference and it seems to be catching um, here on this this piece that's that bends open um, that's where it definitely is catching for me um, so just take that into um, consideration I might actually just move this here okay so the one thing too is you can totally take these out to work on the pages if you want. Um, I know it might seem like a pain to take it all apart, but it literally you know goes back together in a couple of minutes. So it's not really a huge, huge deal. Um, and I can see like on this paper, it's pretty thin. I think this was actually just vellum paper. So um, I might have to reinforce this and no worries. I could go back over it. Actually, we just masking tape or something too. 
but I love the different textures in here between the paper, the acetate pages, the clear ones that I've just printed off, the fabric, and here's this piece. And I didn't even go over them with um, the gold rub-on like I um, thought about. You know, as I maybe work through this book, i got to decide kind of what I want. I mean, in some ways, it's kind of nice the way it looks right now. I mean, look at that over the fabric. Um, so I've got to decide kind of what I want the, the theme of this little book to be. Um, but I love that it's all in the same color family, but yet different in, in variety. So, I mean, look at that over that page. That looks really awesome. It would be actually cool to take several of these sets and put them together and have just a bunch of acetate pages um, and paint on them with, maybe with my Posca markers or something. I think that would be cool. I might have to do that next. And in the back side, oh I got that one in upside down. I need to flip that around. So that is my little two and a quarter by two and a quarter inch book. I love it. I love little things like this. I hope you love it. Um, let me know what your favorite part is. Thanks. Bye.